Alrighty, welcome back to the Big Boy. Here we go. Let's talk about uh, this by Victor's title, Aspen Essling, 21st, 22nd of May, 1809. We're having a little bit of fun. We're kind of coming to grips with the rules a little bit as we play. So it's a little bit haphazard. It's a little bit of uh, rewind, restart, back it up, move it forward type of thing, which is all good. We've actually made it through to the fifth turn, the 8.30 a.m. turn. And we have a nice little situation here where the Austrians were moving up very carefully and they just had uh, fired their artillery in these two hexes and uh, these guys hadn't activated yet. But uh, last turn they had moved up into position preparing to assault Essling with these big honking uh, 11 strength factor guys and some artillery underneath. Look at, that, uh, look at those grand batteries. Six, a factor of six and very nice, uh, tough... Um, uh, cohesion uh, values. Anyway, <clears throat> we activated, lanes activated, is this lanes? Yes, lanes activated first uh, over on this side of the board. We're on the sixth activation. We had three French activations, then two Austrian, and then lanes. And so he's uh, he's activated. We fired the artillery over here, didn't do anything, no big deal, and I'm thinking that may not have been a good idea, and we'll talk about that in a second if I remember to come back to it. And then uh, these chappies here, uh, they said, well, what the heck? Let's, uh, let's pop a shot off at uh, uh, the Freilix uh, Brigade here. Oh, is that a regiment? I forget. Did I say black was uh, regiment or did I say white was regiment? I just can never remember. There's my little cheat sheet. Quickly, he said, hurry. Oh, can't find it. Whatever. Regiment Brigade. Uh, and also uh, Clino. I've always wanted to kill off Clino. We just did. Uh, uh, he uh, he was here as well. So what we did was we fired our uh, EDB cannons. They uh, got a disorder on these guys, and so both units become disordered. And I thought, well, hey, I'm allowed to uh, I'm allowed to move my guys now. So I moved my cavalry, and I went, you know, one, two, well, actually two, three, and then attacked with a charge. Charges are resolved before all, all other uh, shock combat and things like that. So we rolled the dice. We uh, had four factors attacking four factors. Uh, there's no counter battery, uh, no final protective fire type of thing when you're disordered, I don't think. Uh, no, because look, there's zero. So uh, we were able to charge in there unhindered and uh, do some damage. Now, here's a couple of things that were curious about this. Uh, combat. Uh, so, okay, so we charged in, had uh, plus two, plus three for the cohesion values, because these guys have a six and these guys have a three, and then another one for the light horse charging in, and so they did their thing, and we got a recoil one hex and a, a, a cohesion check. Oh, I didn't roll for cohesion check. And they passed, dang it. So uh, they would have routed if they hadn't have passed, now, we also had a pursuit option or pursuit result here for the attacker. We can't do the pursuit because we have the the artillery here that kind of bogs everybody up and slows things down. They do whatever it is they do to the guns and stop them from uh, being used by anybody else. So the artillery now is off the board and destroyed. These guys are retreated and disordered and unfortunately not routed. And so that's the end of that little segment. And then we would do the rest of the activation for the rest of the units if there was something else that I wanted to do. Now, what I have done is kind of exposed a little bit here uh, on this flank with this uh, cavalry, I've just realized, but oh well. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but the other thing about these rules here is, you know, arguably I could have just gone right across this face here and come in this way and these are 300 meter hexes, is that what we uh, agreed they were? I think it was, yep, 300 meters in an hour and a half uh, turn. And once again, I, I'm, as I'm looking at this, wouldn't, now I know people have orders and they have their positions to take and we don't just go reacting to things, but assuming you've got some half confident, uh, competent leaders, if you see uh, a, a brigade or a regiment of cavalry, this is uh, going to be something in the order of uh, 1200 horse riding across the face uh, of you, uh, wouldn't you, uh, you know, order your guns to do something or in, uh, have these guys try and interdict 
or conduct some sort of uh, effort there. Now, maybe they would have done that, maybe they wouldn't have. But regardless, these chaps have, have put themselves in a bit of a pickle there, uh, but deliberately so, because now uh, when these guys do activate, when... Um, which formation is it? I forget which formation it is. Uh, when this formation activates, they are going to have to choose to carry on with their plan, which was to which was to attack into Essling, or attack this unit here, uh, and 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 spend its activation going through the exercise of eliminating or attempting to eliminate that unit, which shouldn't be too hard because if it's forced to retreat. Uh, and it can retreat from a, a shock attack here because that's light cavalry, and it will probably have to take a disordered result. I'm not sure, but it, it may actually be eliminated if it's if it's uh, forced to retreat because it's uh, retreating into uh, you know the cone of fire or whatever, or the zone of control. So anyway, uh, it's an interesting little uh, situation that, that's come up. I'm not 100 certain that this ever would happen in real life back then. But it certainly was an opportunity where artillery had done some damage. That damage was noticed by the cavalry. Cavalry took advantage of the weakness and penetrated in there, broke the line, uh, and have uh, uh, you know inflicted some damage. They took out they took out uh, an entire uh, battery of uh, of guns here. These guys here, so that was well worth uh, the effort. And it delays the attack on Essling for a turn, which is ultimately what we want to do. The less time they're attacking Essling, the better. It allows all these other reinforcements to get across the bridge and arrive uh, to uh, support Napoleon's efforts. Okay, there you have it. That's what went down. Talk to you soon. Uh, we'll wrap up turn five and we'll come back to you and see what, uh, what happens next.